Hello? Yeah, hello. My name is Rose, and uh, I'm from YouTube here. Just wondering, what's your next video going to be about? Hi, Rose. It's going to do distortion effect. The distortion effect? Yeah, I thought it'd be kind of cool. I'm sorry. What? The distortion I, effect. I can't hear you. Can you what? speak a little hold bit on. louder? Hold on. Maybe this will work. Hold, hold on. The distortion effect. Maybe that? Oh, okay. That's much better. <laughs> Yeah, I think your audience is gonna like that. Yeah, I thought they would like it. I mean, we're going through all the audio effects okay. here, so. Well, thank you very much. You have yourself a great day, and uh, best of luck on that video. Okay, cool. Thanks I a know. lot. Appreciate that. All right. Well, bye for now. What's happening, guys? Weird call there. But today we're talking about the distortion effect here in DaVinci Resolve. And as you heard on the phone call there, we're going to show you how you can make that voice sound like it's on the phone, even though it was just me. That's right, little me recorded directly into DaVinci Resolve. And we threw the distortion effect on there, so that way we can make it sound like somebody's on the other end of the phone. We also did that little megaphone thing where I uh, used my, uh, my little megaphone here to make it a little bit louder. So we are going to jump into DaVinci Resolve here. We're going to run over the window, take a look at the effect, just like we have the other effects in our audio series. And then we're going to show you how to make that cool voice that we heard on the phone there as well as the little megaphone voice and pretty much anything else that you want to do that might distort the voice and just give you a cool sound. So let's head on over into DaVinci Resolve and check it out. So the distortion effect here is useful for creating all kinds of sound effects or changing the voice or, uh, you know, crushing down your audio. You're going to see how it works here in a second. And it's pretty cool. It's fun to play with. Definitely uh, an interesting effect that we have here in DaVinci Resolve. So I'm in the Fairlight tab right here. You got the musical notes. Click on that to get into the Fairlight tab. And I want to have my mixer open so I can apply this effect to the entire track. So if you don't see your mixer on the right hand side over here, come on up to the top right here. Click that, open up your mixer, and that should open up your mixer right down here. So let's go ahead and add this track onto our first. So let's go ahead and add this effect onto our first track here, which I called phone. And that's the voice that I want to have coming from the phone. So I'm going to go ahead to the effects right here. And by the way, if you don't see effects right here, come to these three little dots, check, make sure you've got effects checked on here. So that way you should see it here. And if your screen's a little smaller, you may need to use your middle mouse wheel, scroll up and down in here so you can see the effects. Go ahead and click the plus, come on down to harmonic, fairlight effects, and you've got distortion. So here's the distortion window. We're going to run over all this and uh, just talk about what each part is real quick. And then we'll get into some examples. So if you just want to jump ahead, check out the time code down below. You can jump ahead past all this stuff if you're interested in that. So starting at the top of the window here, you've got your reset all button, as well as these three little buttons we see in every single effect we have in DaVinci Resolve here, lock plugin window and preset manager. Below that, we've got some presets here that are already set. We've got boost mids, boost presence, crunchy, fuzz face, high frequency buzz, lo-fi radio, and megaphone. So you can start with some of those to give them a try. You've also got a plus button here that'll allow you to add in your own preset once you've adjusted some of the settings here. You've got these two buttons which cycle through the different presets right here. You've got your A and B button, which we did a series on, link above if you want to check that out. But you can set settings on one and then set, set different settings on another. So you can try different things back and forth. Down below that, we've got our toggle on and off here, turns your effect on and off. On the left here, we have our input meter, tells us the signal levels coming in. Next, we have a graphical representation of what's actually happening with this effect. And looking at the graph real quick, the gray line that uh, looks nice and smooth here, that's your original signal. And the orange line here is how your signal is getting distorted. So if you click through these different uh, options here, for example, fuzz face, you see it knocks it way down and kind of crunches it up. You'll hear how it sounds in a second but uh, it's just giving you a graphical representation of what's going on here with your audio. And then you've got your output meters here. Now you do lose some signal like in a lot of the effects, so you may need to boost your levels at the end just so that you've got enough you know, volume and good levels coming out of the effect. Coming down into the filter section here, what these two are are basically ways that you can limit frequency ranges for the effect. So you can see, okay, you can have everything all the way up to 20K if you want. Remember, thinking about your EQ, that's your uh, frequency range there. And you can cut it all the way down to 1,000 on the high side. You can always double-click these guys to reset them. And likewise, the low cut is where do you want to stop the frequency for the low end? You want to go all the way down to 20? You want to bring it up to 1K? And all these things are going to change how the effect actually sounds. In the next section here, you've got your distortion settings. So at the top, we've got these two little icons here, which are the mode buttons. So the one on the left is going to give you more distortion and creates a harmonic kind of distortion. 
and the button on the right is going to just destroy it a little bit more and kind of really just mash it down more. So you're going to see once we get going here and play them, the one on the left is going to be uh, a little bit uh, less intense and the one on the right is going to be a little more intense. The next part down here, level, is how much is... The next, the next knob here is level and that is how much distortion is being applied to this effect. So you can crank it all the way up and that's a lot of distortion, crank it down, and that's very little distortion. So next here we have the ceiling and the ceiling adjusts the level of the input signal that triggers the clipping. So you can see as I move that back and forth, it makes our uh, distortion a little taller and a little bit lower and it adjusts the level at which it starts to clip. And that clipping is kind of what gives you the effect of distortion. The last section here, we have output. And again, we have our wet dry mix, which we see on all of our effects. And that's going to be the amount of the effect applied to the clip. 100% is 100% of the effect being applied on the clip. And as you back it down, it's less and less of the effect being applied on the clip. And the last item we have here is level, and that's going to boost your output signal. So your level meter right up in here, that's going to boost your output a little bit because you do lose some as it goes through the effect. Now this little button right here is pretty sweet because you can turn this on. This A means automatic levels. So it's automatically going to adjust the levels for you. So you can use that if you want, or you can turn it off, set your own levels. Depends what you want and what kind of result you want coming out of this clip. So that's the window in a nutshell. Now let's get into the fun stuff. How did I make the effect so it sounds like somebody's on the phone? Let's take a look. So in order to make it sound like somebody was on the phone, pretty easy. I just came down and used this guy right here, the lo-fi radio. So uh, let's just play through our clip here. I'm going to solo my phone track. I'm going to turn off the effect. This is what it sounds like without the effect. Yeah, hello. My name is Rose, and uh, I'm from YouTube here. Just wondering, what's your next video going to be about? So that's what it sounds like without the effect. Now, if I go ahead and turn on the distortion. Now, I didn't change anything. I just used this lo-fi radio preset, and here's what we get. Yeah, hello. My name is Rose, and uh, I'm from YouTube here. Just wondering... What's your next video going to be about? So I think that works out pretty good. Sounds like somebody's on the phone. And again, you can tweak it a little bit. Depends on exactly what you're looking for. But that preset seems to work out pretty good. Sounds like somebody on the phone to me. So now what about the megaphone one? Well, I was talking like this, right? So how do we do that? So jumping back in here, I'm going to solo just the track of me answering the phone. And if I scroll over a little bit, I cut out a part of the clip where I'm actually doing, you know, talking with the megaphone thing. So let's say I don't want to apply the effect to the whole track, but just that particular clip. I'm going to go ahead and close this here. One of the cool things that I can do with uh, any effect here in Resolve is apply it to just one clip as opposed to the whole track. So I'm open my effects library right up here, come down to distortion. I'm going to click on it, grab it, and just drop it right on those clips. And when I do that, it's going to pop up the window for me. So I do have uh, some options here. You see there's a megaphone. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Let's slide this guy over here a little bit. I'm going to loop this section, and now I'm just going to play through it and, and get something that I like as far as what it sounds like. So in order to loop it, I'm going to come and select this guy, select our range right here, turn on our looping, and hit Option or Alt forward slash. The distortion effect, maybe that? 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 All right, so I like those settings. I think that works out pretty good, and I'm going to go with that. So I don't know if you noticed, but when I change the mode here, it changed the sound a lot. Let me just play through it one more time here, and I'm going to change between the two modes, but not change anything else, just so you can see the difference there. So let's go ahead and loop that again, and uh, we'll change the modes. So we're starting with the mode on the left here, and then we'll change to the one on the right. The distortion effect, maybe that? The distortion effect, maybe that? So you can see not only did it get louder, but it also cuts off that signal a lot harder and uh, it just makes it sound a lot harsher. So you can go through and play with all these settings, get any kind of cool sound you want. Maybe start with some of the presets up here. There's some good ones there, you know, crunchy fuzz face here. Let's see how that sounds. The distortion effect, maybe that? So there's all kinds of cool stuff here that you can do with the distortion effect here in DaVinci Resolve. That's it guys, the distortion effect here in DaVinci Resolve. It's a fun one. Play with it, have fun. If you make your own video, comment below with a link to your video so I can check it out. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up for me. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you hit that little bell. That's right, you in the next video. Peace.